Hello, everyone. So I'm here to talk about uh, Kyle Rudolph because, once again, there's the Wayne's Rudolph trade cut, whatever you may be, kind of things going out there. And so this one, I'm mainly talking about how replaceable can Kyle Rudolph potentially be? And I know to some people that might sound like a really stupid question, but I'm going to get into it. Because he was drafted in the second round 2011 in that draft, which included a certain quarterback that we don't speak of. And Kyle has actually never had more than 840 yards in a season, which was in 2016, mainly due to the fact that that line just imploded and he was the only guy they could really get it to without having Sam Bradford dying back there. And that was a product of, you know, just really bad offensive play. And he's also never had a double-digit touchdown here. And the closest he gotten he has gotten was with nine touchdowns back in 2012 when, you know, Christian Ponder seemed to not be able to throw it to like anybody else half the time. So also keep in mind. In terms of annual averages of things, salaries, all that good stuff, Kyle Rudolph is currently the ninth highest paid tight end in the NFL right this second. That's including all of the, you know, the Jared Cooks getting new deals and all the good stuff. And I have Rudolph's measurable numbers right here back from the day. And he weighed in at 6'6", 259. He had 34-inch length arms his hand size was 10 and three quarters a 4 8 3 40 a vertical of 34 and a half a broad jump of 9 5 and a bench press of 19. now i'm not even going to tell you the name of this guy at least to start with here but his height is 6 3 he's 254 so a little lighter and three inches shorter um arm length 33 and one fourth and a quarter inch compared to just the arm length of 34 inch with Kyle Rudolph. Hand size goes from 10 and three quarters from Rudolph to nine and a half inches. And the 40s, 483 compared to 48 flat. Vertical, 34 and a half inches to 38 inches. A broad jump, 95 for Rudolph, 10 foot. And then bench press, 19 for Rudolph, 18. For, you know, a little mystery guy here. I just want you to think, like, if those numbers impress you at all. But I don't know if you guys know who that is. But that was actually Tyler Conklin, who's on the roster. Fifth round draft pick from last draft. So, athletically, he's nothing special to me. Kai Rudolph isn't anything special. He's mainly just really, really tall. And he knows how to use that body, but we don't. I don't know if we use him the right way because we usually use him as like a safety blanket because you know he doesn't really run block all that well, and he's not a speed demon, especially since you know he was running a four eight three to begin with, and then now, you know, he's almost thirty. He's got a lot of injuries on him. He had some surgeries, and there was like a stretch where he couldn't play more than like eight or nine games. Injuries, I think, might have taken a toll, so he's definitely slower than 483 now. And once again, he's not a good run blocker, really. We have David Morgan for anything where it's like we need a good run blocking tight end out there. Usually Morgan comes in, so doesn't really have that as a saving grace. I, I think he's a ra ra he's a rather average ish tight end in total. Because he, he doesn't give us anything special over the top. Like, he's okay. He's good, I guess. Like, he's he's not going to hurt you. But he's not really going to help all too much. Like, he, I think he brings a lot of aspects to the table that we could actually replace. And when you're talking about saving 7.6 mil in cap, if you're talking about if you're going to get rid of one between Waynes and Rudolph, I think Rudolph kind of loses out, unfortunately. <laughs> Because he's been here so long. And not to mention, 
the draft is filled with highly athletic tight ends all over the place. And so, like, if I said there was a chance of getting a Josh Oliver, a Foster Moreau, or a Jay Sternberger, you know, in the third round, third, fourth round, any of those three guys, would you take that tight end in the third round if he's there, whichever one it may be? And if you want a 40 time, the slowest one is Jay Sternberger at a 475, which is faster than, you know, rookie Kyle Rudolph at 483. And I think at that point, you start talking about guys who can really challenge a defense vertically down the field where that's kind of a new dimension. We don't really have that right now. And we never really had that with Kyle Rudolph. He, I think his best asset is when he's vertically down the field, mainly because he's not a guy that will outrun people. Unless you scheme him wide open, he's not going to really be able to get you yards after the catch. But he's very good at contested catches because he knows how to use that large body of his. So if you get him moving down the field and he's one-on-one against a linebacker, if you throw it high enough, you probably have a completion. But outside of that, there's not much there. So... And when you're talking about a day and age where you kind of need that speed at the tight end these days, otherwise, you know, teams know how to scheme now for, you know, these wide receivers and these running backs that can, you know, they generally know how to do that now. And if you add a guy who's as dynamic as any of those three guys, or even if I wouldn't condone it, but they've met a few times with Noah Fant, I wouldn't condone taking Noah Fant, but he kind of is the prototype these days where it's like he might be a little undersized, but he's running a 4-5. So there's that. And he like Kyle Rudolph's mostly a safety blanket. And just to, just so I have like some statistical things here, I averaged out his catches, yards, and touchdowns per year. He averages 48.25 catches a year. For 473 yards and 5.1 touchdowns. So I I think those are fairly replaceable numbers. The only one that you might say, well, we might get a little worse is the touchdown number. But I think at the same time, when you have Thielen and Diggs, you probably can split that between those two plus a new tight end that comes in. So I I know there are going to be people that really hate this topic and don't like me for it. But that's uh, willing to take this risk (laughs) because I think Wayne's who, you know, Wayne's is the other option to get rid of. And I think he's kind of a, he's a young ish corner. He's about 26, but we've seen steady improvement year by year by year. And even if he doesn't get re-signed after this season, I think having him on the roster is probably worth, more than what we would get for him because I think in free agency, if we let him walk, there's a team that would be willing to pay him a lot of money due to free agency stuff just because that's how that works. And we might be able to get one of those third round compensatory picks for him. So I can't, I just can't see a team though giving up a three or a two for Trey Waynes. And it becomes one of those things where he's worth more on the team than he is off it, even though his cap hit is really, really high and we need money. I think I would rather keep Trey over Rudolph just because I think Rudolph gives us more things to replace. He's an older player. He's going to start declining soon if he already has it. And yeah, this is my thought on the matter. I want to know what you guys think down in the comments below. Until next time. I bid y'all adieu.